uh, and, and the whole reason we did the zoning amendment and the form-based code was we needed to incentivize development. And the only way that we could do that without putting real money in was to expedite the approval process and give more density. Uh, density is currency to the development community because you're being able to do more than what you were allowed to previously. And then also us expanding what the allowable uses are. Um, Bridgewater zoning ordinance, like many communities in, in, in New England, severely outdated in terms of you know, what we wanted to see. But you know, our plan was much more holistic that relocating the MBTA station, um, looking at pedestrian and, and traffic improvements. And there's none of these are one-offs. They're all interrelated because those things are going to support the success of what Tom and Bob want to do. So, yeah, I think um, one thing that's really unique about this particular Broad Street property in, in terms of density, I mean, we looked at this every way possible, right? In order to make those numbers work with the debt service coverage, it, it was roughly, what, 100 units if it was strictly multifamily? Yeah. And I think we decided right off the bat, especially me being a, a resident here, that's not a product I want to be involved in. I think what makes this special is Tom was able to get creative and say, okay, if we can leverage home ownership with townhomes, combine that with lesser density in the multifamily, and then really thoughtful retail with restaurant space and revive the 60 Broad Street building, that requires less density to still hit the same financing metrics that you're talking about. So that's what makes this project exciting. Yeah, because the debt load goes down as those units, if you, if you have townhomes and you're selling them off, you're, you're not carrying the debt long term on that piece. Yeah. It's a creative thing. Yeah, and we're a little bit creative in what we're allowed, what we can do internally, you know.